Hi, my name is K5 Steel, and today I'm going to be telling you a story about Dave the Octopus and how he got his brand new hairdo. Um, before I begin, though, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dave. Um, first of all, he's an octopus. He's around two and a half years old, which translates to in human years, let's say he's around 35 years old. He's probably the most average octopus you're ever going to meet. He's a really, really normal octopus. He lives in a small metropolitan city on the East Coast. He has a very average job. Something in sales is what he usually tells people before they get a little too bored with what he's saying. Um, He's not really a supervisor, but he's also not at the very bottom of the barrel in terms of the job. Um, so basically he's comfortable in his position, he's comfortable in his house, he's got a pretty small apartment, he's got a TV, he's got a kitchen he doesn't use too much, but he doesn't go out to eat that much. He's, he, has, he has a couple of friends, he doesn't leave it a very exciting life is basically what I'm trying to say about Dave. And I'm gonna show you a typical day at Dave's place of work. All right. I'm going to draw Dave over here. And there's his big head. And he's sitting with a couple of tentacles, taking notes at your average, at your average meeting. And let's see, who else is going to be at this meeting? Let's say it's a frog. frog with a kind of a round nose and the frog's got a tie on. He's also paying attention to the speaker and the third person lets um to make it a giraffe. And she's also paying attention to the speaker. I mean they all are. You know they have to take notes and they have to be able to account for their time in a meeting. There she is taking notes also for a few of those necessary spots. All right. But what made this meeting pretty unusual was the person who was giving it. I mean, it, it wasn't just an average kind of animal that you would kind of see and forget. It was a pretty, oh, sales are up by the way. It was a pretty extraordinary looking horse. And I mean, he wasn't just handsome. I mean, he was a pretty, pretty breathtaking guy. But the thing about him wasn't so much his, it was partially his personality, but really what it was was his amazing, unbelievable mane. I mean, he just had the thickest, most lustrous hair that Dave had ever seen. And he really couldn't, kind of couldn't take his eyes off this guy. I mean, he had, he had never really seen such really thick hair before. And he was, he was just kind of beside himself with maybe a little bit of jealousy, maybe a little bit of awe, but he was just thinking, God, if I only had that hair, I could be a completely different person. Think about all the, all the people I could, I could hang out with and the people who would want to be hanging out with me. And maybe I could start dating some people and get involved in a serious relationship. Isn't that what, you know, grown-ups do, uh, you know, I, I should really be, I should have that kind of hair. There's no reason why I shouldn't, and I don't know why I was cursed to this fate right here. There are his moles. Sorry about that. So, he took a coffee break, and instead of going to the usual place where he went to get his usual cup of everyday boring coffee, he went to the drugstore. And he went to a section of the drugstore he had never really gone to in his, in his life before. He went to the hair care section. Normally, the only thing that Dave does was buy, would be to buy um, like a bar of soap. And that's what he would use on his head. So he, he went to this section he was looking at and he, he was looking at all the products and he was just completely surprised at all of these different powders and tonics and lotions and oils and creams that you could put on your head to make your hair thicker or thinner or fuller or more lustrous or less oily or more greasy or more solid or more limp. And he was just looking at all this stuff and then finally he found one bottle. I'm going to show you what this bottle looked like. 
that all drawn on this side over here. It looked kind of like a Listerine bottle. It had that shape. And the label said hair growth cream. And oh, I keep on hitting the tripod. Um, I had a picture of an alligator. with a really thick head of hair on it. And Paul was like, oh, I'm sorry, Dave was like, you know what, if I, um, if this is good enough for this alligator, it's, it's certainly good enough for me. I guess I'm kind of closer to a reptile than I am to any other animal that's on any of these other bottles. So he bought it. It was, it was pretty expensive. But he went home that night. This is what he looks like from the back. This is kind of what you'd be seeing if you were to be riding the subway behind him. I'm holding on to one of the subway poles. He rode home and he stood in front of the mirror at home and he put the stuff all over his head. And here's the mirror. There he is looking at himself. Let me show you what this stuff looked like. It was, it was not nice. He opened up the bottle and immediately he was just overwhelmed by some noxious fumes. I mean, it smelled, it smelled like onions and gasoline and bile and it was just the, the worst odor and it really was kind of burned his lungs. And he put it up, not only did it burn his lungs, it was also burning his head. So the first thing that he did was wrap his head up in a scarf. And he was like, I just need to sit and take my mind off of this. There he is with his head wrapped. And so he did what he did every night. He decided to watch some TV. And his cat meowed as he watched TV. It meowed at him because it was basically saying, this stuff really stinks. Dave, you are really stinky. I really wish you hadn't put this stuff on your head. And I want dinner, is what the cat said to him. Basically, but I mean, it's just a cat, so of course he didn't really... He couldn't really understand what was going on. All he was hearing was a bunch of meowing. Um, so next morning he woke up. And his head was really, really itchy. Underneath this, underneath this scarf. So he took it off. And to his surprise, he had all of a sudden, overnight, he couldn't even believe his eyes. He had grown a really, really thick lustrous, even thicker than what I had just drawn. The thickest head of hair you could ever imagine an octopus having. Let me, let me just color this for you because, I mean, this was, this was some truly unbelievable stuff. Oh my god, it was so thick he could barely run his own tentacles through it. I mean, this, it was amazing and he, I mean, he, didn't think it was real. He kept on tugging on it and looking at it, but then he didn't want to touch it too much because he didn't want it, he didn't want it to come out at all. And what he did was he jumped and he screamed and he was so excited. Even though you can't even see him, you can't even see the hair, but you can see him jumping. And here are his legs going absolutely crazy. You can't really see their mouths, but there's his hair. And I'll just show you how it just looked really fantastic. And then, you know, it didn't actually smell too bad considering that the hair cream was just so stinky. So he went to work that day, he took the subway in and everyone was looking at his head. I mean, here's what it looked like. I'll do a before and after for you. I think I already did the before, so I'll do the after. 
And he had some really nice sideburns. Here he is from the side. There's his eye looking out. And here is him now. He, here he is now holding that subway. And he was just kind of flipping his hair, showing it off, acting real cool. Beside himself with joy. I think I already said that. He was, the point is that he was really happy. And he went into work and as, just be, before he was about to walk into his office, he all of a sudden kind of had, you know, the need to go to the bathroom. You know how that happens sometimes, you, you know, obviously he's an animal. So he just slipped into the men's room. But it was one of those men's rooms on, you know, on the same floor that he worked on. It was a single stall. And he really shouldn't have just pulled the door open without knocking, but he did. There he is with his hair. He's holding the door with that arm. Sorry, tentacle. There he is over here. Squeeze, get some more ink on my pen. And he opened the door with a flourish. I'm getting kind of sick of drawing this hair. And what did he see in here? But that same horse who had done the meeting, the handsome one, there he is, except that he was completely bald and he was in the bathroom with his seat sitting down on the toilet because there's barely any space, trying to look in the mirror and fit his mane onto his head. Basically, Paul slammed the door and he didn't even know what to do. He kind of felt like a fraud. He didn't, he, he was thinking like, how could I, I, I don't even know what to do. Um, you know, I, I felt like I, I've kind of I've kind of fooled myself into thinking that, you know, hair, having hair is going to make me happier. Having hair is going to make me feel more complete. So what he decided to do was not carry on with the hair treatments. And as time went on, he still had quite a bit of hair. It never really wore off. And months later, this is what he looked like as he walked down the hall at work. And he still felt pretty good about himself, though, you know, everyone had pretty much known what he had done. He, no one really talked about it to him. In fact, I think people kind of pitied him because, you know, they knew that he, basically he advertised to the world that he was insecure about his hair. And those are his spots. But, he did get a promotion, and it was because of his hard work that he got that promotion. And as he, as time went on, his hair receded more and more, and he went back to this regular hairdo. The one he was born with as a cephalopod, with his large, with his large head because of his large brain. He still had some hairs left, but he basically finally grew to accept himself for who he was. And that's the story about how Dave got his regular due.